The Zodiac Killer remains one of America's most infamous and elusive serial killers, haunting Northern California in the late 1960s. The Zodiac Killer is believed to have murdered at least five people between 1968 and 1969, though some suspect that earlier and later murders might also be attributed to him. His crimes, marked by chilling, taunts, and cryptic messages, captivated the nation and left investigators baffled. Despite numerous attempts to unearth his identity, the Zodiac Killer was never apprehended, and his true identity remains a mystery to this day. The Zodiac Killer's modus operandi involved targeting young couples in secluded areas. His first known victims were shot in December 1968 near Lake Herman Road, followed by another brutal attack in July 1969. Each crime scene was left with eerie messages, and the killer's disturbing pattern of communication included taunting letters and complex ciphers sent to newspapers and police. This cryptic correspondence, alongside the brutality of his attacks, created a media frenzy and left an indelible mark on the public's imagination. The Zodiac Killer's reign of terror, characterized by his enigmatic persona and the unresolved nature of his crimes, makes his case one of the most compelling and haunting unsolved mysteries in criminal history. The Zodiac Killer's terror began on December 20th, 1968, on Lake Herman Road, near Vallejo, California. That evening, David Faraday, 17, and Betty Lou Jensen, 16, were shot while parked in a remote area. The killer approached their car, pulled out a .22 caliber handgun, and fired multiple shots. Faraday and Jensen were both killed, with Jensen found a short distance from the vehicle. This brutal attack marked the beginning of what would become a series of horrific crimes. A little over six months later, on July 4th, 1969, the Zodiac Killer struck again. Michael Mago, 19, and Darlene Farron, 22, were sitting in their car at Blue Rock Springs Park in Vallejo when the killer approached them. He used the same point, .22 caliber handgun, and shot both victims. Majo survived, but suffered severe injuries, providing a crucial eyewitness account. He described the assailant as a man with a distinctive hooded outfit and a mask with a symbol resembling a crosshair. These early attacks were marked by their brutality and the cold, calculated nature of the killer. The Zodiac's chilling pattern of violence, combined with his taunting letters to the media and police, set the stage for a series of murders that would keep the region in fear and puzzle investigators for years to come. The Zodiac Killer's crime spree escalated with a series of meticulously planned and executed murders that continued to shock and mystify both the public and the authorities. The Zodiac's modus operandi evolved, and his attacks became more audacious and complex, leaving a trail of fear and confusion across Northern California. On September 27, 1969, the Zodiac Killer struck again, this time near Lake Berryessa in Napa County. The victims, Brian Hartnell, 20, and Cecilia Shepard, 22, were enjoying a quiet day by the lake when they were approached by the killer. This attack was notable for its premeditation and theatricality. The Zodiac appeared dressed in a hooded costume that resembled a medieval executioner, complete with a symbol drawn in the center of his chest. He approached the couple, tied them up, and then, in a disturbing twist, engaged in a conversation with Hartnell, who initially mistook him for a police officer. During the conversation, the Zodiac revealed his identity by drawing the symbol used in his letters and claimed responsibility for the earlier murders. He then proceeded to stab both victims, with Hartnell surviving, despite being seriously wounded. Cecilia Shepard, however, died two days later. This murder was particularly chilling due to the Zodiac's ability to manipulate and terrorize his victims, showcasing his sadistic nature. Following the Lake Berryessa attack, the Zodiac Killer's final known murder occurred on October 11, 1969. Paul Stein, a 29-year-old taxi driver, 
was the victim after picking up a fare in the Presidio Heights area of San Francisco. Stein was shot in the head by the Zodiac. The killer then removed a piece of Stein's shirt and left it at the scene. Despite a partial fingerprint and some eyewitness accounts of a suspect who was seen walking away from the scene, the investigation yielded few solid leads. Witnesses initially thought the killer was African American, but this was later corrected, adding to the confusion. The Zodiac's disturbing pattern was not limited to the murders themselves. He continually taunted the police and the public with cryptic letters, ciphers, and phone calls. His letters began almost immediately after the Lake Herman Road murders, but the first letter sent to the Vallejo Times Herald on July 31st, 1969. In this letter, he claimed responsibility for the Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock Springs Park murders, and included one part of a three-part cipher. The Zodiac demanded that all three major newspapers in the Bay Area publish his cipher or face more killings. The cipher, known as the 408 cipher, for its 408 characters, was solved within a week by high school teachers Donald and Betty Harden. The decoded message revealed a chilling confession. I like killing people because it is so much fun. Following this, the Zodiac Killer sent another letter with the second part of his cipher. This time, the Zodiac's communication included threats to kill children on a school bus. This threat seemed particularly sinister, given the Zodiac's apparent willingness to target the most vulnerable members of society. Although the Zodiac's threat never materialized, the mere possibility kept the public on edge. One of the most perplexing aspects of the Zodiac Killer case was the series of ciphers sent to various newspapers. While the So 408 cipher was quickly solved, the Fe 340 cipher sent in November 1969 remained unsolved for over 50 years. The Zodiac's message in this cipher, decoded in 2020, revealed more taunting words. I hope you are having lots of fun in trying to catch me. This cryptic communication continued to fuel speculation and frustration among investigators and amateur sleuths alike. The investigation into the Zodiac Killer's identity was complex and challenging. Numerous suspects were considered over the years, but none provided conclusive evidence tying them to the murders. Arthur Lee Allen, a Vallejo school teacher, emerged as a prime suspect, largely due to testimony from a former friend, Donald Cheney. Cheney claimed Allen had discussed details about the Zodiac Killer that matched aspects of the crimes. However, despite extensive investigations, Allen's handwriting, fingerprints, and alibis did not conclusively link him to the Zodiac Killer. Allen died in 1992 before any formal charges could be brought against him, leaving many questions unanswered. Another suspect, Earl Van Best Jr., was identified more recently largely due to claims made by his son in a tell-all book. However, like Alan, Van Best's connection to the Zodiac Killer remains unproven and controversial. The Zodiac Killer's case has been marked by numerous attempts to solve the mystery, but despite the dedication of law enforcement, cryptographers, and private citizens, the killer's identity remains elusive. The Zodiac's chilling ability to evade capture combined with his disturbing taunts and cryptic messages, has made him one of the most infamous and enduring figures in the annals of American crime. The search for the Zodiac Killer became one of the most extensive and high-profile investigations in American criminal history. Despite the intense media coverage and relentless efforts by law enforcement agencies, the case remained unsolved, largely due to the killer's ability to evade capture and the lack of substantial evidence linking any suspect directly to the crimes. Following the Zodiac's first confirmed murder on December 20th, 1968, the Vallejo Police Department was the first to investigate the case. The initial response was hampered by the lack of forensic technology and resources available at the time. The first crime scene, Lake Herman Road, presented limited evidence beyond the bullet casings in the victim's bodies. Eyewitness accounts provided little to work with, as the area was remote 
and the killer had vanished before the police arrived. The next major break in the case came with the Zodiac's second set of murders on July 4th, 1969, at Blue Rock Springs Park. Michael Magot's survival provided a crucial eyewitness account. Majo described the attacker as a white male, approximately 5 to 8 inches to 5 washer tunes, 10, with a medium build and curly brown hair. Despite the detailed description, the investigation faced challenges due to the killer's use of a mask and the fact that the attack occurred at night. The Zodiac's subsequent taunting letters to the media, claiming responsibility for the murders, added an additional layer of complexity to the case. These letters included details only the killer could know, confirming his involvement in the attacks and creating a public frenzy. The Zodiac's third murder near Lake Berryessa represented a significant escalation. The attack was premeditated, with the killer using a disguise and engaging in a conversation with his victims. The presence of a partial fingerprint and a pair of gloves at the scene offered some forensic evidence, but it was ultimately inconclusive. The investigation team focused on the fingerprint, but it did not match any known suspects. Additionally, the gloves were initially linked to a female passenger of Stein's cab, complicating the case further. The murder of Paul Stein, the Zodiac's final confirmed victim, was particularly problematic for investigators. The scene of the crime was in a densely populated area, and several eyewitnesses reported seeing a suspect fitting the Zodiac's description. Despite this, the police were unable to capture the suspect, who had a head start. The Zodiac's inclusion of a piece of Stein's bloody shirt in a letter to the San Francisco Chronicle served as a cruel reminder of his continued presence and his ability to manipulate the investigation. Throughout the investigation, the Zodiac Killer's letters played a crucial role. He sent a total of 22 letters to local newspapers and authorities, with 17 of them going to the San Francisco Chronicle. These letters included cryptic messages, ciphers, and threats. The Zodiac's taunts were designed to keep the public and police in suspense, and his use of ciphers became a central element of the investigation. The Teru 408 cipher, solved shortly after its release, provided a disturbing insight into the killer's mindset. The Teru 340 cipher, which remained unsolved for decades, became a symbol of the case's complexity and the difficulty in understanding the Zodiac's true intentions. In addition to the ciphers, the Zodiac's letters often included bizarre drawings and statements, further complicating the investigation. The Zodiac's message in one letter read, This is the Zodiac speaking. By the way, have you cracked the last cipher I sent you? My name is... Followed by a series of 13 symbols that were never definitively decoded. These cryptic messages continued to challenge investigators and amateur sleuths alike. Despite the intense scrutiny, numerous suspects emerged over the years, with varying degrees of credibility. Arthur Lee Allen, a convicted child molester and a suspect in the Zodiac case, was closely examined. Allen had a history that aligned with some aspects of the Zodiac's profile, including his visits to Lake Berryessa and his possession of bloody knives. However, forensic tests of Allen's handwriting fingerprints, and other evidence did not conclusively link him to the crimes. The investigation into Allen's involvement was marred by conflicting testimonies and speculative accounts, leading to his exoneration and death in 1992. Another suspect, Earl Van Best Jr., gained attention more recently due to allegations made by his son. The claim, detailed in a tell-all book, suggested that Van Best was the Zodiac killer. However, like other suspects, this theory lacked conclusive evidence and was met with skepticism. The Zodiac Killer's case has been the subject of numerous documentaries, books, and articles reflecting the enduring fascination with the unsolved mystery. The investigation has continued for decades, with new leads and theories emerging periodically. Despite the efforts of countless law enforcement officers, cryptographers, and private investigators. 
the Zodiac Killer's identity remains unknown. The case serves as a chilling reminder of the limits of forensic science and the challenges faced by investigators in solving one of America's most notorious serial killer cases. The Zodiac Killer's case has left an indelible mark on the annals of criminal history. Despite exhaustive investigations, the killer's identity remains unknown and the murders continue to haunt the public imagination. The Zodiac's ability to elude capture and the cryptic nature of his communications have contributed to the enduring mystery surrounding this case. One of the most significant impacts of the Zodiac Killer case is its influence on popular culture. The Zodiac's chilling taunts and cryptic messages have inspired numerous films, books, and documentaries. The 1971 movie Dirty Harry, starring Clint Eastwood, drew inspiration from the Zodiac case, capturing the public's fascination with the elusive killer. In 2007, the film Zodiac, directed by David Fincher, offered a detailed and dramatic portrayal of the investigation, further cementing the Zodiac's place in pop culture. These portrayals have kept the case in the public eye, influencing how the Zodiac is perceived and remembered. The case has also had a profound impact on law enforcement practices and forensic techniques. The Zodiac Killer's use of ciphers and taunting letters highlighted the need for advancements in cryptography and communication analysis. The eventual decoding of the 340 cipher in 2020, after more than 50 years, demonstrated the persistence of amateur sleuths and the evolving capabilities of modern technology. This breakthrough was a testament to the ongoing interest in the case and the dedication of those seeking answers. Despite the numerous suspects and theories that have emerged over the decades, the Zodiac Killer's true identity remains a mystery. While suspects like Arthur Lee Allen and Earl Van Best Jr. have been scrutinized, none have been definitively proven to be the Zodiac. The lack of concrete evidence has led to a multitude of theories and speculations, with new suspects occasionally coming to light. The case remains unsolved, with the Zodiac Killer continuing to elude justice. The Zodiac Killer's letters and ciphers remain a source of fascination and frustration. The cryptic messages and symbols sent to the media and authorities have become iconic symbols of the case. While some ciphers have been solved, others remain indecipherable, adding to the enduring mystery. The Zodiac's final known letter, sent in 1974, included a chilling message that has left many wondering about the killer's true intentions and whereabouts. The Zodiac Killer's case continues to be a subject of intense interest in research. Crime writers, journalists, and amateur sleuths continue to explore new theories and investigate potential leads. The San Francisco Chronicle, which received a significant number of the Zodiac's letters, remains a key source of information and insight into the case. Despite the passage of time, the case has not been forgotten, and new tips and theories continue to emerge. In conclusion, the Zodiac Killer case is one of the most enduring and enigmatic mysteries in criminal history. The killer's ability to evade capture, the cryptic nature of his communications, and the numerous suspects and theories have ensured that the case remains unsolved and intriguing. As time passes, the Zodiac Killer's legacy endures, a haunting reminder of a murderer who continues to elude justice. The search for answers continues, driven by the hope that one day the mystery will be solved and the true identity of the Zodiac Killer will be revealed.